got to uh, I got to get the news from my my own dad that he mm. had uh, he had cancer, and um, not only any kind of cancer, but a cancer that spreads through the blood. And um, um, as I heard this, I immediately thought, God, why? <laughs> It's awesome to stand here before you today, family. And this is the time where we talk about the communion, what the cross means to us. And specifically, I get to share. It's an honor to stand here on Father's Day. Uh, and it's an honor to come up and stand here specifically on Father's Day. Not only because I got the best dad in the whole wild world, um, meaning my dad, Eric of Clint, but also my spiritual dad, Kaspar. Uh, and then we have my third dad, which is God. Uh, so I got three dads. It's quite incredible. Nice. But because four years ago on Father's Day, uh, I got to become a true son. Amen. That's what it meant to become a disciple to me. It meant to become a true son. Up until that point, I was neither acting like a son should, a spiritual son, or a son of God. One of the, uh, one of the things that these three father figures had in common in relation to me was that I was disrespectful and unloving towards each one of them. Uh, my dad, I believed lies about, allowed myself to be distracted from uh, and uh, distanced, listened, listened to gossip about him. Uh, and uh, something that I never really uh, it, uh, even spoke to him about, I be just believed lies behind his back. A pre and I never really tro showed true appreciation. My spiritual dad I argued with, persecuted, lied to, um, tried to frame, and also showed no appreciation of. Finally, God, I said, did not exist. I called evil, and then was bitter towards, and ultimately, I murdered him. Imagine that, telling your dad that he doesn't exist, only to then go on and murder him. That is what God suffered for each and every one in this room. On Father's Day, who is the least appreci appreciated of all fathers? God. On Father's Day, who is the most hurt of all fathers? God. On Father's Day, who suffers the most neglect from his own children? God. All these three father figures I had in my life had another thing in common in relation to me. They forgave me. They not only forgave me, but they loved me, despite who I chose to be. You see, that is what a father does. He loves you. He may not love your actions, but he loves you. He may not love your sin, but he loves you. But there was only one of these father figures that inspired the other fathers to act like fathers, and it was God. I am sure that everyone in this room have suffered loss at some point someone that they deeply cared about. We know that pain. My mom's stepdad, he hung himself. My grandpa died of cancer. My grandma died of cancer. Not only cancer, but brain cancer, so she lost her memory. She stopped being the grandma I knew. And when I became a disciple, when asked about what might make me fall away, I answered, going back to believing that God was evil. And it may sound strange, but this week that was put to the test. So this this Monday, I got to uh, I got to get the news from my my own dad that he had uh, he had cancer, and um, not only any kind of cancer, but a cancer that spreads through the blood. And um, um, as I heard this, I immediately thought, God, why? And uh, this is why I stand here before you today, because today the cross means to me healing. And it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, if you go to Deuteronomy 32, Deuteronomy 32, and it says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, See now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. You could also say there is no father besides me. I put to death. And I bring to life. 
I have wounded and I will heal. And no one can deliver out of my hands. You know, um, going out of that chat with my dad, I was, I, I was angry. Why, why, would, why would God give someone who I love so deeply? I can't. And then I thought about this scripture. Because it says, I put to death but I bring to life. And I realized that one person I was angry with for giving someone else in my life pain was actually the one who gave me that person to to be hurt about anyway. Why should I be angry at the dad who gave me my dad? Why should I be bitter at the, the one who made my dad act like a dad? Why should I be, why should I be sad? When the one person who can take life away also gives life to the very same person I am heard about may die. And when when I was standing, when I was sitting down and talking to my dad, it, it was it was crazy because he was not the one crying. I was. Because he had greater faith. And ultimately that that's what that's why God chose him as, as my, not only my physical dad, but a spiritual dad. He said, I have been living my life as if every day could be my last anyway. So what, give or take a few years of cancer, what would that do? Nothing. My faith will remain the same. And as I stand here before you, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, it's no wonder that Daniela actually gave me some of these before <laughs> uh, before I went into this. Um, but when it when it comes to to fathers, I've noticed in this country we don't really appreciate fathers, and a lot of us, even maybe in this room, have had troubles with our fathers, struggles, frustrations, and unloving uh, relationships that have not been solved. It doesn't matter to, uh, with, about who I speak to here in Sweden. Someone is always bitter about, the, uh, about their relationship with their dad. And that's, that's what we do to God. When we, when we get bitter, that's the one person that is really taking it personally is the father himself. And he says here, I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal. And I thought, why have you wounded me? But I didn't think about why he, when he was going to heal me. I realized that the same, per, same God, same Father who may wound me for a good reason will also bring healing. And so when I, go, when I went out of that time, I wanted to distance myself from God. I wanted to pull away and not talk to God. And then I prayed because I knew there is no one, literally no one else who can solve this issue. And so I prayed, God, I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know why, what is happening. But I know that you're good. And I know that you bring healing. And I can pray for it. And God, there, if there's someone who can heal cancer, it's you. you. You've done even greater things than that. And I prayed, God, let it be, let it be that you uh, use his colleagues, because he's a doctor. And just... Just use them to get him treatment as quickly as possible. Let them know that one of their colleagues is, is, is having cancer. And uh, the next morning, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really just a miracle because dad sent a message in the chat saying, my colleagues have now uh, uh, reached out to me and they're saying that they're going to give me the, fast, uh, uh, the fastest reviews possible to get me the fastest treatment possible. That's what prayers do. That's what, that's what the God of healing does. And ultimately, when you distance yourself from your dad, why would you when he's the one who helps you? God feels the same way when, about how we treat our fathers. He's the father of fathers. So I got a chart for you, church. If there's any relationship that you have not solved, if there's any bitterness in your hearts, if there is specifically on Father's Day, any bitterness towards God, Let that go and reach out 
Reach out to the only one who can actually help that relationship. He's the only one who can bring healing. In Psalm 30, verse 2, it says, Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. And I thought about, even as I was walking home, not only could God save my dad, but there has to be a reason for this, for this cancer. And my two brothers who have distanced themselves the same way I did from my dad for years. So two of them, my two brothers, they've said they cut off their relationship. And not only did they do that, but they cut off my, their relationship with me and don't want to draw close to, to God either. Remaining atheist. And so I thought, I prayed, God, let it be that they actually start caring for my dad. For our dad. It's the same dad. And let it be that, they, that you get, make a miracle happen, that they start studying the Bible this year. And so they, they as dad sent a message in, in the chat to, to both of them that he had cancer. I haven't responded in, in months, really, to his messages. And uh, this was the first time in, in a very long time, in years, that I've seen them respond within minutes. God brings healing to the family. What I believe is some may see as a curse. God uses as healing. What some believe is wounding is only the beginning because God ends up with healing. He says, I have wounded, meaning it's in the past. But I will heal, meaning it's in the future. The end result is not wounding, the end result is healing. And so when you think about your relationship with God, is it wounded or is it healed? Is it bitter or is it better? What do you, how do you view your relationship with your dad? And so when we think about God today, at the end of this communion, whatever hurts you have is what you've done towards God. I think about, every time I think about the cross, I think about nailing up my own dad. That's what my sins did. If you nailed up the person you love the most to a cross, how would you feel? How terrible would you not feel? How evil would that not make you? And yet, that's what we all did. And that, that, that one same dad forgave us and still wants a relationship. So don't stop having a relationship with God. Don't let any pain overcome you. Let God overcome you with healing. And that's to God be all the glory. And uh, let us pray for the communion. God, I want to thank you so much that we get to be sons and daughters. That we get to have the same debt. That we get to have the same convictions. That you give us convictions about what sonship and daughtership should be like. That you show us, where even when our dads on earth fail, you still succeed, dad. When there is wounding, you bring healing. When there is lack of care, you care. Even before we cared about you, even before we knew that we nailed you up, even before we understood how much we hurt you, you still cared and reached out to us. I, I would have been dead, I believe, if it wasn't for you. I would have been dead physically and spiritually and in my life, in my relationship with my dad. You brought healing to all of it. And so I pray that for all of us to do something with that love that we've been given. I pray that no one walks out of here untouched. No one without a tear in their eye over what we did to you. And no one without the gratitude that comes with that. I want to pray this only in your mighty son, Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going there to see my Savior. I know he'll meet me when I come. And I'm on me.